Hi everybody, I'm Crystal from Homemaking on the Homestead and today we're going to make homemade pizza. Oftentimes the, the biggest hurdle to making pizza at home is the crust, but pizza crust is super simple to make and the cost that you can save by making your own pizza instead of going out and buying it is amazing. So it's easy to do and we'll get at that right now. We're going to make the pizza dough in the Bosch today. You can also use a KitchenAid without problem. It'll work just fine. And this recipe makes two 14 inch pizza crusts. Um, I'm going to be using white flour, but you can use half white and half whole wheat. You could use all whole wheat. It really doesn't matter. And the first step that you're going to do is mix the yeast with your warm water. Now I always tell people, you know, when you're trying to determine how warm should your water be to activate your yeast, I always tell people just a little bit warmer than baby's bath water. I figure that's pretty simple for most moms to understand. So I'm going to dump my yeast in there and I like to use a chopstick because it makes the job a little simpler. Stir it around and then we're going to let it sit for a few minutes just so that it can activate. Now that the yeast has sat for a few minutes, we're going to just pour it right into the box. And the oil, this recipe calls for olive oil. And I wait and usually add the salt after I've added the flour. The recipe calls for five cups of flour and I'm going well, four to five cups actually. So I'm going to add four cups of flour first and wait to see if I need to add more or at least close to that. At least close to four cups. We'll see here. Basically, I try to get most of the flour added but I don't want to end up with too much flour. So I err on the side of not enough to get started. Okay, now I'll add the salt, kind of sprinkle that around. And it's time to turn on the Bosch. Now you can get a closer look at the dough and see that it hasn't formed a ball and you can see that it still even looks sticky. So I'm going to start by adding a little bit more flour and turning it on. Alright, so you, now it looks very different and when you feel it, it doesn't feel, mm, it still feels a little bit sticky. It's almost cleaned up around the edges. I'm going to go ahead and run this for a few more minutes until it's all mixed up nicely and then I'm going to show you what that looks like. I had to add a little bit more flour to this so it didn't come to the five cups, maybe four and a half cups in total. The amount of flour you need varies could vary from uh, based on how much moisture your flour has in it, the type of flour you're using. So you just kind of have to add slowly and then mix it in and then watch. Right now you can see it's cleaned up all the dough on the side. There's no flour left at the bottom. The dough is uh, slightly sticky, not too bad though. It's actually perfect for pizza dough. You don't want it to be too heavy. At this point, it, we're going to knead it for about five minutes in the Bosch. If you're using a KitchenAid, you might want to let it go just a little bit longer, seven, eight minutes maybe. And, um, and then it's going to be time to let it just sit and rise. This has finished kneading about five minutes now. So we're going to cover it and let it rise for 45 minutes. And you don't have to even remove it from the mixer. If you're using a KitchenAid, you can just throw a dish towel over the top of it to help keep any warmth in there. And, um, and that's all there is to it. Right now my dough has been rising for 45 minutes and so I'm gonna turn it on to punch it down and then we're gonna get ready to roll it out. I thought I'd show you how to take it out and that the, when you take it out of the pan sometimes it'll stick to your hands and your tendency might be to want to put flour. Don't do that. Instead of using flour, use oil. Flour is just going to simply make the dough more dense and the oil will prevent it from sticking to your hands. Once the dough has uh, come out, you can kind of just give it a little bit of more kneading and shaping and then we're going to cut it in half 
to turn it into two pizza crusts. The easiest way that I found to cut dough is to simply use a pair of scissors. And I just kind of eyeball it, try to get them both as equal as possible. It's not really vital that they be absolutely the same. And now we're going to get ready to roll it out. This is a 14 inch pizza pan and I just add olive oil to the pan and then spread that around. And grab one of my dough balls and I start by just stretching it out, making it a bit, bit bigger circle. And the thing about pizza dough is that uh, oftentimes you can get it stretched out and then it shrinks back and stretched out and it shrinks back. That's perfectly normal. Then at that point you just have to keep working it to get it as stretched out as possible so when it does shrink back it fits in your pan. And that's what I'm going to do right now. And I love this rolling pin. I have, you had it for years. It makes the job of rolling out any kind of dough much easier than a big rolling pin. All right. This one is all done and I'm going to repeat the process on the second one. The next step is we're going to pre-bake it. I like to bake my pizza crust about five minutes in the oven. It makes it so that the dough doesn't get soggy and it just holds bad things together better, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and pre-bake it and then we'll start making a pizza. Both of the pizza crusts have finished baking, pre-baking for five minutes and now we're going to get ready to make the pizzas. You can make your own sauce and I will give you a link on a recipe. I actually find it easier to just use uh, spaghetti sauce and this is just an inexpensive can of Del Monte spaghetti sauce. That's the easiest way to do it. Our um, pizza today is going to be pepperoni and salami. I have olives and here I have some sauteed onions, peppers and mushrooms. You can put the vegetables on the pizza raw and there's nothing wrong with that. That's usually how I've always done it. Uh, a couple weeks ago we were visiting my daughter and she made pizza for me and she used sauteed vegetables and it really enhanced the flavor of the pizza so I'm sold on that now so that's how we're going to do this one. You start with the sauce and I just spoon it out, spread it around you don't want too much so it's dripping off every piece people eat but at the same time you want to make sure you get everything covered nicely. I've never really measured I just kind of guess and spread until it looks good to me. Alrighty. There we go that looks perfect. And now the pepperoni or whatever you want to start with. I always start with the meat, then I add the vegetables and I end with the cheese. How much pepperoni and what you put on really depends on your own personal taste. Now we add the salami and you could use sausage. I've used chicken. Uh, I know some people that use ham, even hamburger. I'm not a huge fan of that so we usually stick with pretty much traditional basic what you'd normally find. I, I do like chicken but today's is salami and pepperoni and these go on pretty quickly because the slices are big. All right one more. At this point it's time to sprinkle some olives on. I just try to get them as even as possible. And now the grilled vegetables. And these are a little harder to loosen up and spread around. And it doesn't have to be a lot. I used, for two pizzas, I used uh, one medium-sized onion, 
a medium sized red pepper and about three or four mushrooms. And sometimes it's actually just a little bit easier with some of these, especially the peppers, to just use your hands and spread them around. I think my boys could be happy if I didn't put any vegetables on at all, so. But I can't do that. And finally, the mushrooms. And lastly, I top it with mozzarella cheese. This bowl of cheese is probably two pounds and I'm not gonna use all of that. I, I don't even really measure that either. I just put it on until it looks like something we would like. I like mine a little cheesier than the ones that we buy. So I just make sure everything's covered nicely with a layer of cheese. And now it's time to bake it. We're going to bake it for 12 to 15 minutes until everything's golden brown. I'm going to repeat the process on the second pizza and I will show you the end results. Oh yum, look at this. Okay, uh, these pizzas bake for 15 minutes and they are ready to serve right now. And I have a hungry family waiting to eat them. I hope you found this video helpful. The links for the pizza crust recipe and the sauce recipe can be found below. And thanks for joining me.